In this chapter, we're going to make two assumptions about our preferences, just for simplicity. Um, it's going to be that preferences are monotonic and that preferences are strictly convex. So monotonic first just means that more is better. More is better. Um, that is, if I'm here at bundle x, if I have the same amount of x2, but I get a little more x1, I would strictly prefer that to having less x1. Or if I'm at the same level of x1 and I get a little more x2, I would strictly prefer that to having less. And you can think of that as like, for instance, um, I, can, I can get rid of um, any amount of x1 and x2 without, um, without any cost. So I strictly prefer having more over having less. That's what the monotonicity assumption is. So this is better than x. And then over here in blue, I'll draw bundles that must be worse than x, just based off of the monotonicity assumption, because they have less x or less, uh, less x1 or less x2. So worse than x. So that's the first assumption that we're going to make on preferences. The second assumption we're going to make is that preferences are strictly convex, uh, which just means that um, they, I'll say, indifference curves uh, bow inward. They have they have some kind of curvature that is that's that's like a a bowing of a bowing toward the toward the origin. So that so strictly convex just means suppose x is indifferent to y, or we know that uh, we are indifferent between x and y, then we have a strict preference for, for bundles that are um, averages in between x and y. So if z is a weighted average, weighted average of x and y, we prefer z to x and we prefer z to y. So um, a weighted average, the thing about z is it's always going to lay on the line. Um, and I guess we could include z must not be equal to x or y. So z is going to lay on this line in, somewhere in between x and y if it's a weighted average of x and y. And you can see that. Take um, take z as one half x plus one half y, just a straight average. Um, x is at two two, y is at one four. So z would be half of x, which is one one, plus half of y, which is point five two. And so z is going to be one point five and 3. Um, 1 1.5, 1, 2, 3. Right in the middle of x and y. And if z is a little more x than y, then it's going to be somewhere around here. If z is a little bit more y than x, it's going to be around here. But the idea is, with strict convexity, we are going to prefer z. We always prefer mixes um, over uh, two bundles that we're indifferent between. So the indifference curve is always going to be uh, bowed inward like this. That's going to be the shape of our indifference curve. We prefer z to both x and y when, when we're indifferent between x and y, and z is in the middle. That's what strict convexity means. And strict, if, if our preferences are strictly convex, then there are two important consequences. Let me clean this up. Um, important consequences of strict convexity. One, there's no flat spots in our indifferent, in our indifference curves. No flat spots. And so for any set of prices, P1, P2, there will be a unique 
optimal bundle. And that just means there's, there's just one solution to the uh, optimization problem. Um, and so you can see if there were flat spots, something in a difference curve that looked like this, for example, say there was a flat spot between here and here. So it's curved flat and then curved again. If we had an indifference curve that looked like this and we had a budget that was exactly the same slope as that, as that flat spot, just like this, then any point, you know, any bundle on this flat spot would be optimal. Um, and so, uh, but in difference curves like this, we want to rule out this situation um, uh, just for simplicity. So, you know, we can't have the situation go on because if we take these two bundles and we know we're indifferent between them, um, strict convexity means that we pref strictly prefer the average between them. Uh, so that rules out these flat spot indifference curves. So we know um, there's going to be a unique optimal bundle for any, for any price set. So I'm going to erase this. Bring us back our yellow area. Okay. And then the second important consequence of, strict, of strictly convex preferences are, is that we have a diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Diminishing marginal rate of substitution, which is that as we get more of a certain good, let's just say x1, uh, as we get more of x1, we become willing to give up less and less x2 to get more x1. And that, again, that just has to do with our preference for, um, for diversity. We want, we don't want extremes. With strict, strictly convex preferences, we don't want extremes. We don't want a bunch of x1 and not much x2. We'd rather, we'd rather have a mix. Um, so you can, you can see for yourself, let's calculate or let's approximate some marginal rates of substitution. Um, give ourselves different amounts of x1 and see uh, how much x2 will, will we give up for one more x1. So let's say at this bundle here, um, we have one unit of x1, and how much x2 will we give up for one more x1 to get? So we want one more x1, and we are just willing to give up two, you know, the vertical distance here, two units of x2. We're okay with doing that. We're, we stay on the same indifference curve. Let's say, at, so now we're here with two units of x2, how much of x1 will we give up? Um, sorry, how much x2 will we give up to get one more x1? So we want one more x1. How much x2 will we give up? Now we're down to like 0.6 maybe. So it's falling. As we get the idea with diminishing marginal rate of substitution, as we get more and more x1, we become less and less willing to give up x2 because we want mix mixtures. Um, and then with three units of x1, how much are we, how much x2 are we now willing to give up to get one x1? Here's us getting one x1. Now we're willing to give up like 0.2 x2 or something like that. Um, so as, as we get more x1, become less willing to give up x2 to get more. All right, so hopefully that made it clear.